By all rights, and considering the longevity, history, dramatics, and sheer speed, open wheel racing should be so far ahead of NASCAR that it would take the world's finest telescope for the stock car set to ever see the back of the IndyCar field. But because open wheel racing has, for the most part, been run by the wrong people for most of the past century, IndyCar lags behind NASCAR in American awareness, sponsorships, television ratings, and attendance. Those were the words of Robin Miller, one of the greatest journalists to ever grace the series. Despite IndyCar's phenomenal racing and entertaining nature, the series is unfortunately facing some problems underneath the surface, which is something that a casual fan may not be overly aware of. And no, believe it or not, it has nothing to do with the existence of Stingray Rock. Therefore, without further ado, today we're going to be discussing IndyCar's big problem. As many of you know, IndyCar has two engine manufacturers, Honda and Chevrolet. The general consensus is that the lack of variety regarding manufacturers boils down to the cost of supplying the engines, putting an increased amount of strain on Honda and Chevrolet as they're required to provide more engines between them. That means roughly 17 each for the Indy 500, which costs a bomb for each company. Obviously, it's not exactly 17, it's just a rough number to represent the fact that each company needs to fork out quite a bit. With the price per engine estimated at around a million dollars, each manufacturer spends an estimated whopping $17 million to fit a motor in each of their cars for the Indy 500. Honda generally spends a considerable more than Chevrolet due to powering more cars. With the added strain of the new 2024 hybrid engine regulations, which have been pushed back due to lack of progress, Honda are threatening to leave the series indefinitely when their contract expires at the end of 2026. The popularity of IndyCar is the source of the problem. Honda unfortunately doesn't see much return on investment due to the smaller audiences that tune into IndyCar compared to the viewing numbers of F1 or NASCAR, for instance. This means that unless something changes, it's highly unlikely that will see a third engine manufacturer join the sport in order to relieve the stress on Honda and Chevy, therefore making remaining in the series a less viable option. Furthermore, the technology in IndyCar is vastly outdated. I personally believe that, from a fan's point of view, this is better for the racing, since it makes the racing more cutthroat, with no power steering, no crazy downforce, and a gorgeous sounding 2.2 litre VIN Turbo V6 that makes the series feel like you're watching F1 in its prime. However, from a company standpoint, the the fact that the chassis that we use now was designed in 2012 and has not seen a single change barring the aero screen in over a decade is crazy, since a development in the chassis department could boost popularity or better still, improve the engine development and interest for more OEMs. The current engine still doesn't implement hybrid technology which is something that F1 did back in 2009. We're only 15 years behind, boys. Keep faith. It, it, it'll come. I'm going to pass you over to another enthusiastic British guy and my good friend James Ines to discuss his current frustrations with the series. I guess he, he needed somewhere to vent. Make no mistake, IndyCar is sleepwalking into disaster. After Roger Penske took control of the series and Indianapolis Motor Speedway in 2020, there was a plethora of optimism surrounding the future of the sport. Despite the pandemic, Roger Penske kept it afloat and deserves a huge amount of credit and praise for developing the facilities at IMS whilst keeping IndyCar alive. However, the series looks in trouble. A supposed golden generation of international talent combined with the most full-time entries in the sport for a long time is being confronted with a schedule bereft of the core of Indy racing. For the first time in 60 years, there will be no oval over 1.5 miles other than Indy. The two engine manufacturers are considering leaving, rendering the sport obsolete without any power to run it. The cars need revitalizing. The DW12 has been a terrific servant of the sport, but now innovation needs to take over, for that was the very foundation on which IMS was built. No one seems to know what steps to take next. IndyCar needs leadership, a clear direction and development route. The racing will be good because the racing is always good. In 2024, the drivers will put on the show because they are superstars doing the best in the machinery that they can. But IndyCar cannot rely on racing alone. 
At this moment in time, the new engines are expected to be debuted after the Indy 500 this season, which is later than the initial target of St. Petersburg in March. I don't personally have much faith that the development of the engines will be complete by then, let alone next year, so I don't believe it's worth getting our hopes up. We've also lost the Texas Motor Speedway from the calendar, which was one of my favourite tracks and a favourite amongst fans. We do, however, have the return of the Milwaukee Mile, which, despite not being as good as Texas, is still a slight positive, I suppose. However, I don't think anything will really outweigh the monumental loss of the Texas Motor Speedway. This now means that the majority of ovals on the calendar aren't even big enough to warrant using oval spec aero, which sucks if you love the way it looks like I do, and obviously the speeds that they reach. Unfortunately, the series infamously struggles to adapt. Therefore, when hit with conundrums such as this, the change required to secure the series' survival most likely will take time. I think that this situation is a massive shame. IndyCar produces the most competitive racing out of any open wheel championship in the world. However, due to historically poor management decisions, it somehow never garners the attention that it deserves. If we could see a huge hit in popularity with more F1 or NASCAR drivers attempting the series, the fan base could increase, making the return on investment for the engine manufacturers better, which in turn will then attract more engine manufacturers. The popularity could snowball if just one more manufacturer was interested, since development of the engines could increase in efficiency and each manufacturer would end up making more money in the long run. Honda's proposed solution to the problem is for Ilmor, who partner Chevrolet and Honda in the production of the engines, to build a spec engine for the entire series. Whilst there are benefits to this, many fans are outraged by the idea of seeing the series go entirely spec, which will remove the engine development war entirely, making it feel more like a European feeder series. However, if no other solutions are devised, I would humbly accept this in order to remain watching my favourite sport, but that's a topic for another day. Unfortunately, there's nothing that you or I can do about this situation, therefore we just have to remember to enjoy the series in its current state before anything drastic happens. However, I will be here to provide updates when news does drop regarding the situation, so subscribe to the channel if you would like to stay informed. That's about all we have time for in today's video. If you enjoyed, please remember to like the video to let me know and comment down below what you think about IndyCar's current state. If you guys have any ideas regarding solutions, let me know in the comments down below and I can discuss it in another video. Also, I'm trying to convince James to bring back the old um, post-race podcasts. However, he's complaining about being busy a lot at the moment. So I've said to him that if this video gets 500 likes, he has to make the post-race podcast with me. So if you'd like to see the post-race podcast, drop a like on this video and I'll try and get him convinced. But until then, take care and thanks for watching. Thank you.